Okay. Very nice. So if if, if you are ready, Tadashi, I will introduce you and we can start. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so welcome everybody to Holotube. It's very nice. Uh, we're very happy to have today Professor Tadashi Takayanagi from Kyoto, who's not only been very, uh, very kind to accept our invitation, but also so kind as to talk at uh, midnight in Japan. So we're very lucky to have him. So without uh, further ado, let's, let me give the, okay, the, give the floor to Tadashi, who will tell, tell us about page curve from holography from a holographic moving mirror. And sorry, let me say as usual that uh, everybody can ask questions. Just unmute yourselves and, and ask questions. And in case it gets out of hand, I will moderate. But normally, it's always serious. So please go ahead. Uh, I'd like to thank organizers for this follow tube for kind of invitation to this uh, seminar talk, and I'm very happy to be here. And I'd like to talk about uh, this title, the stage curve from holographic moving mirror. So this is a basically basic, quite a basic problem of actually uh, application of conformal field theory with boundary to the physics of gravitational physics, including bra black hole information paradox. And I know this for tube is mainly also aimed for applied holog applied holography like ADS QCD or ADS CMT and the, Actually, so the technique which I'm also giving talk here, especially about what we call ADS BCFT, it's a holographic dual or boundary conformal field theory has a potential application to condensed matter physics and related topics. And I will also give some detailed review of that uh, and that, uh, that that holographic method. And but this talk is mainly based on this work with this uh, Ibrahim Akar. Yuya Kusuki, and Noburo Shiba, and uh, Jishawe, they are all in you know, our YITP. Ibrahim and uh, Noburo is our postdoc, and Yuya and Jisha are our graduate student. And this is based on this work. And also, we are preparing some longer version of this paper. So let me start with, uh, so let me explain first content. So we start with the introduction, and uh, then we go to some quantum field theory, CFT analysis, both boundary conformal field theory and its application to moving mirror. So moving, I will explain what moving mirror means, but this is a kind of basic idea how to realize time dependent background which mimics, which has some Hawking, Hawking type radiation. And I'll explain how we can understand some basic property of entanglement entropy in a unitary evolution is called page curve by using moving mirror models. And then we go to holographic description, namely this ADS BCFT. BCFT is a boundary conformal field theory. This means just conformal field theory lives on manifold with boundary. And uh, so the boundary is a new ingredient and in how we can make up holographic dual of such a conformal field theory. This is a basic, I, I, I will give some detailed review of this ADS BCFT construction. And using that, we'll give some holographic counterpart of moving mirror setup and discuss our black hole connection to black hole information problems. And uh, so section two and section three is a mainly CFT and later section four and later is about holography. And uh, this ADS CFT has some, I think it's somehow a potential application to ADS condensed matter and some other application of ADS CFT correspondence. Okay, so let me begin with the introduction. And uh, so as we, many people discuss it these days, uh, black hole information loss problem is a very crucial key to understand the meaning of quantum in quantum gravity. We often say quantum gravity, but quantum gravity is not completely understood. And the main reason we don't know the precise meaning of this quantum in quantum gravity. We understand the quantum mechanics, but we don't completely understand this quantum nature of quantum gravity. And uh, here is a very basic sketch of black hole information problem is we start with some very heavy star, which is we expect that is described by some pure state. And uh, we have some gravitational collapse, very peculiar to gravitational interaction. And then we, we have black hole, black hole is formed. And once black hole is formed, we know there are Hawking radiations coming from black holes. And uh, because of that, the mass of black hole decreasing, right? Changing energy, changing into radiations and black hole, size of black hole shrinks. 
and also entropy of black hole also decreasing, right? And, uh, and eventually we expect completely evaporation. We, we have some complete evaporation of black hole and nothing remains. And so, of course, energy is conserved, energy changes into radiation and the Hawking radiations. And uh, according to this Hawking calculation, I mean, famous calculation, Hawking radiation looks like thermal flux. And that means maybe we expect something like uh, thermal radiation and we just end up with some mix of state. But if we end up, if we have some this evolution from pure state to mixed state, this is a real big problem of quantum mechanics because this breaks unitarity. Right? If we have unitary time evolution, or pure state changes into pure state always. Should not end up with mixed state. So the basic question is that is that information inside this original black hole is lost after radiation. Because if we, in the end we end up with um, mixed state, some information inside the black hole is lost. But to keep the information, we need this. We need this idea that the information should not be lost if evolution is unitary and the final state is still pure. So let's assume this and, what the, and see what is the consequence of this statement. And so this is a basic idea of page cut, 1993. So quantitative formulation. So we, should, we want, this is physics, so we want to make everything quantitative, not qualitative, quantitative. And so for that, actually, we can think about the behavior of entanglement entropy of radiation. And then we reach the idea of page curve, which you are explained. Just uh, this and uh, next next uh, slides. So we have a, basically we model the system like this total Hilbert space is consists of black hole Hilbert space times radiation Hilbert space, and we have some unitary time evolution for whole Hilbert space. And this is psi zero is the initial state before even before the black hole, and we have a time evolution and the gravitational collapse, and in the end and a lot of Hawking radiation, this is a unit, let's assume this is a unitary time evolution. And then, so because we have a Hilbert space of radiation on the black hole, so we can trace out a degree of freedom of a black hole. This is a usual process, right? When we define entanglement entropy, we trace out the black hole Hilbert space. And then we have a Hilbert space for radiation, right? And we have some quantum state for radiation, but this is no longer a uh, pure state because we, we even though we start with a pure state, but we trace out some part in general. This is always true in quantum mechanics also. That there are no problem at all. So we just end up with mixed state of radiation. And this is a reduced density matrix for radiation. And then we can define von Neumann entropy, rho of rho, minus rho of rho here. This is a this is a definition of entanglement entropy of radiation. This is a quite usual definition of entanglement entropy in quantum field theory also. Okay, so this is a, and then, so this is a definition of entanglement. Then imme we immediately see the following behavior, which is called page curve. So let's assume this time evolution is unitary, and we calculate time dependence of radiation entanglement entropy. And then we start with the black hole and the lot of Hawking radiation shrinks to zero size in the end. But this is a middle point. We, we, or a, from here to here, this middle point is called page, page time. And uh, from the t equal zero to page time, entropy, radiation entropy, entanglement entropy is increasing, monotonically increasing here. So because we have a black hole and small radiation, and if, because these two guys are entangled, strongly entangled with each other, maximally entangled with each other, so if radiation is increasing, so entanglement entropy is increasing. But if we reach the really half point, which is called page time, it's black hole size and radiation size, Hilbert space dimension is the same, then this is, these two guys are maximally entangled. But after that, right, black hole shrinks to small, much smaller size and radiation dominates, right? And then even though these two guys are entangled, strongly entangled, so the entanglement is very small because black hole is very small, right? So that way, after that, entanglement entropy decreases. This is a quite usual behavior in an, a unitary evolution. So this should be true for if the total system is unitary, uh, if total system is pure state and if we have a unitary evolution. But if we trust just the original Hawking calculation of uh, Hawking radiation, it looks like summer, right? So then it's always going up, entropy going up, right? So this is something long answer if we want to uh, preserve uh, quantum information or if we want to preserve some unitarity, so then this is not, should not be true. So this correct curve should be this page curve. And uh, so that means in other words, this is not 
we didn't derive here. We just talk. We, we just what we want to say is that if black hole evolves, black hole evolution is unitary, then we should have page gap. So that means. So anyway, we calculate page. Uh, this, uh, if we calculate this uh, radiation entanglement entropy in some way, and if we see the behavior is page gap, then we can argue that there are no information, basically no information paradox here, at least from this viewpoint. So this is basically what we want to uh, consider. Okay. And uh, so the so for this there are. Uh, me, these, can I just ask something? Yes, sure, sure, sure. Uh, on the previous slide, so uh, you you say that you start with a pure state, right, and then you trace yeah, 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 out yeah. the black hole. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, in a pure state, shouldn't like the entanglement entropy between the Two subsystem be equal. Yeah, that's right. The subsystem, so that between black hole Hilbert space and radiation Hilbert space. Yeah, but that means that initially the black hole doesn't have entropy, or yeah, zero. Yeah, no entanglement entropy. So it's just the so thermal black entropy. Hole, okay, okay, black hole has an entropy. Black hole has an entropy, but this entropy is not the same as entanglement entropy. Yeah. So here we're talking just about the entanglement entropy. Yes. Right? Now yes. Taking yes. Away. Yeah, yeah. 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 So initially, black hole has this entropy. And because of, as you can see this picture, it's uh, monotonically decreasing. This is a black hole entropy. But, but, but this is, is kind of. To, sorry, but is there a way to distinguish those two? I mean, when you. Yeah, yeah. This black hole entropy here, because we, we, we are always talk about the pure state. And if we just talk about one black hole without the radiation, but still it has an entropy, right? So this yes. is a black hole entropy. This is sounds strange because we know whole Neumann entropy is zero if we total system is pure. Yes. But this entropy appears because of coarse grain. We are doing some sort of coarse grain to define this black hole entropy. Okay. And this is different from what we have, uh, we, we define entanglement entropy here. And then you're able just to monitor the entanglement entropy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just calculate the entanglement. And we just forget about black hole entropy. That's what okay. uh, I see. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the question. And uh, yeah, so then recently there are remarkable processes, uh, progresses of this direction. And this is a, a, the page curve actually explained by using so-called island formula. This is uh, simply summarizing this picture. This is actually also, we can re-derive this formula from our approach. And uh, so this is like uh, consists of two contributions. So entanglement, for example, we know black hole entropy is de described by this area divided by Hodge Newton. We have some black hole horizon and divided by area of black hole horizon divided by Hodge Newton. But there are some quantum co contribution, which is like quantum entanglement entropy. An idea is like this. So we have to minimize this uh, combination. And uh, we, what we had in mind is this setup. To, so we talk about entanglement entropy. So here, actually, entanglement entropy for subsystem A to make everything. So let's forget about the black, black hole entropy. We, here, we talk about the very fine-grained fine -grained entropy, which is precisely defined by just tracing on some zero freedom, some explicit zero freedom. And so we are focusing on subsystem A, and we compute entanglement entropy. This is very defined because this is just conformal theory. Right? So if this is gravity, we have some problem. Uh, it, maybe it is fine, but it's not clear. But we know so how to define entanglement to be quantum mechanics or quantum manual system, namely also including conformal fuel theory. But the interesting point is that we actually couple this conformal fuel theory to gravity. This is a non-trivial point. This is a, this is a more, most non-trivial point of this recent uh, progress. And in that case, what happens? These two guys are interacting with each other. We calculate entanglement entropy A, but actually, if we want to calculate entanglement entropy, we, we need some geometry of this gravity, actually. So here we had a, we cal this is the answer to the cal calculation of entanglement entropy. SA is actually is equal to um, entanglement entropy of this region A union, some region inside gravity called island. So union of these two guys, plus this is a quantum entanglement of these two guys on the other side. And plus, because we create some region, island in gravity, there are some gravitational entropy, which comes from gravitational edge mode. And that is this area term. So we have to sum of these two, two guys. So this is a basically a formula called island. We will also explain from a holographic approach of this formula. 
And this is found by the staining Don and Almuheri uh, and Gerhardt and Marolf and Maxfield. And also there are many works in this, now there are many works. And because of this formula, so because the new ingredient is this iron, creating iron is very, uh, changes uh, behavior of entropies quite a lot. And this actually explains phagic. I'm not going to the details of this in original approach here, yeah? but uh, this iron formula clearly explains how phagic curve appears in, uh, from the uh, evaporating black hole. But uh, there are some, actually this, Analysis, actually, it's very heuristically very good. And uh, so we can write uh, some picture and roughly understand what is going on. But actually, this typically, if we want to do some serious calculation, this involves very complicated analysis. And uh, if we want to treat also the other approach called replica one for approach, but this is also very complicated. If we want, to, and uh, it's not easy to go higher dimension. And that, that, that means we need some kind of improvement also in this direction. So here, actually, we are going to the opposite way. So in this talk, so one, there are two aims of this. Uh, there are two reasons why we want to consider moving. Right? This one reason is here. So we want to go opposite way of this relation between page curves and black hole physics. So we want to start with just page curve in conformal fuel theory and uh, apply area safety choreography. And then what kind of gravitation diagram do we have? This is our, our one question, basic question, which we would like to consider in this talk. And so we focus on, so for this, we, for page curve on safety, so we actually find that the class of model cause moving mirror actually gives a very simple derivation of page curve in conformal fuel cell. So that's how I will explain. This is the main part of this talk. And then, so I, I should explain what's the moving mirror here. And this here is just cartoon explained what is a moving mirror. It's just a kind of mirror, completely reflective mirror. It's just accelerating in some direction. So let's assume the observer is sitting here. And we focus on 2D physics, just means only one dimension, one special dimension. And the mirror is here and just moving in this direction and with some non trivial acceleration. Of course, if this mirror moves constant speed, nothing happens, Not, nothing interesting happens. It's acceleration here. And the moving mirror have been known for a while as an instructive model, which is analogous to uh, Hawking radiation from black hole. Indeed, it, it's the basically the same reason we have radiation. Same reason as Hawking radiation occurs in black hole physics. And you can see this Bill Davis famous textbook of curved space in quantum field theory for introduction of this moving mirror calculations. But at the same time, there are second uh, reason why we can think about moving mirror is actually related to non-equilibrium process. So this actually has also potential application to ADSMT or applied choreography. And uh, so we have, I think, yeah, many of you have heard many, uh, I mean, heard about process called quantum quenches, which is a very basic time-dependent process, which where also quantum entanglement plays a very important role. So this is a kind of summarization, summarization process in non-equilibrium. Non Physics. And actually, this moving mirror is a count, it gives us some new example of such direction also. This gives some non trivial, non equilibrium process where we have suddenly excited the system and non trivial quantum entanglement propagates, as we will explain in the background. And maybe even we can realize this because the mirror is, of course, mirror. So we can, we maybe even realize it laboratory. So it's a kind of nice. Uh, model, which, you know, ex some kind of, which realizes some anal analog black holes and also some related non equilibrium physics. So this is actually second motivation. One is a, to understand black hole information paradox, and the other one is to understand some, also extend our, um, our knowledge about non equilibrium processes. Okay. So let me explain how we can describe this moving mirror by using conformal fuel theory techniques. So basically we use, because we are talking about only two dimensional conformal fuel theory, we can use the technique of this conformal mapping. Right? We start moving mirror, typical moving mirror setup is here. This is a time and a space. And originally it's, uh, mirror is static. At some t equals zero, it suddenly moves, accelerating in this negative x direction. So th there, this is a trajectory of mirror, but we can act to some conformal map to just a static mirror. 
So we can, always you can, we can do this basically. So for any choice of this curve, we can have this. And we, in my talk, I defined T and X and the T minus X is U, this is a right concoordinate, T plus X is B. And after new coordinate, new coordinate with tilde, we put some tilde here. And we do some conform mapping. So here we only do, we can only do conform mapping for U, you coordinate U, not B. The reason is that we start from just static mirror and later accelerating. So we assume initial coming waves are vacuum. So we are talking about incoming vacuum, and but later it becomes non-trivial vacuum, changes into non-trivial vacuum. So incoming wave is just ground state, just normal. For incoming wave, this state is just ground state. So because this is a time-dependent background, we should be careful about definition of um, vacuum. So if this is an incoming, we are talking about incoming vacuum. But this is incoming vacuum is not to be excited state from the viewpoint of out, uh, outgoing waves. So this is a basic our setup. That's the reason we only do this conform mapping for U coordinate. And but after mapping, so this is just a, you know just a half a half a space conform fusory. Conform fusory on just half space. And this is just standard setup boundary conform fusory. And the boundary conform fusory is just summarized here. So, so for special choice of boundary conditions, a part of conform symmetry are preserved. This is called the boundary conform fusory, BCFT. And if conform fusory, D dimensional conform fusory, have a SO2, comma D symmetry. And if we put some boundary, some part of that is broken, but we can keep some subgroup of this SO2, comma D minus one, one dimension lower conform symmetry. So we have some, and we have, a, we have uh, many different boundary conditions which satisfy this boundary conform invariance, and we can label it to alpha. And in two dimension, this is also nicely captured by the formalism called boundary state, cardio state formalism. And uh, so here we give some most uh, first example of moving mirror. This plays a very important role in my talk. I will give two different examples. The first one is just constant radiation. This is just a, a static kind of black hole which radiates. So this is a, this corresponds to the choice of PU of this. This PU is uh, like this one, right? This PU, this choice of PU is let's choose this way. Exp log of one plus exponential. Beta is a kind of temperature, actually, inverse temperature. And this for this, we can calculate ZT. Right? The mirror trajectory looks like this. Initially, almost static, but suddenly accelerate, but approaches to the velocity of light, right? Approaches to the velocity of light. And in this case, as we can calculate energy flux, this is just Schwarz derivative of conform mapping. This is familiar in 2D CFT. And it, we can calculate it. Very simple formula, but later time, later, later u large means this here, and uh, it's constant. It's exactly the same as thermal flux, thermal flux at temperature one over gate. And uh, this trajectory looks like this, almost minus t, but uh, right, this some correction, exponential correction, and here temperature appears. And in this case, we can act conform mapping, right? Conform mapping so that this moving mirror is just straight line. And then, interestingly, we see some horizon already here. So this region, this is shaded region, is, does not appear here. It's just hidden outside completely. So this is a structure is exactly similar to um, standard black hole um, global structure. Like this is a black hole event horizon, horizon here, and this is the inside black hole region. And because of that similarity, we have some Hawking radiation in this background. And indeed, this is this is exactly Hawking radiation. Basically, physics is uh, also computation the same. So this in that way, so we can model some black hole radiation by using a uh, moving mirror setup. So I, I will explain the second example later. But uh, before that, let's talk about entanglement entropy. So the our main aim, basic aim to think about moving mirror to calculate entanglement entropy in this non-trivial time-dependent background. Huh? So to get that, so, and, uh, so in, in general, entanglement entropy depends on the theory, of course. What kind of 2D conform, like free, bos free boson theory, free fermion theory, or interacting theory, or holographic CFT, results depend on that. But uh, first, we describe some universal results, which is true for any CFTs, 2D CFTs. So this is the simplest case, but it's actually enough to reproduce page count. 
So to get a universal result, we choose the subsystem A to define entanglement entropy to be semi-infinite line. Right? Uh, we start at some point, which is called x0. This is x0 and goes to infinity. Just semi-infinite subsystem. And the uh, complement is here. Uh, here, it's, uh, this black thick line is a curve is a mirror. So this is a subsystem B complement. So we are talking about entanglement between this region and the other region, region A. And uh, so we compute this entanglement entropy. And if you know how to calculate entanglement entropy, so you normally use replicatory. And to use replicatory, we put some twist operator at the end of this interval A, right? End of subsystem A. This sigma n is a twist operator. So basically, this becomes just one point function in this background, which is universal. But actually, we use some conformal mapping here, right? And then after that mapping, we have a region A here. And we just, this distance L, large L is very pro, crucial role because this one point function of some primary operator is just L to some power, right? Scaled this way, just uh, like, like two point function because we, this is a mirror, we have a mirror. So one point function with boundary is the same as two point function in normal without a mirror. So we have some, that the conformal dimension is well known. This is just twist operator conformal dimension. And these are some normalization, which will uh, come back later. But it's called boundary entropy. And after that, and we apply conformal mapping here, right? We then we in the end we find from this from this simple formula that this is the entanglement entropy. P is a this profile, right? P is just profile, a conformal mapping profile, and same as basically this determine the profile of mirror. And we have some constant part that is called boundary entropy. This depends on the boundary condition we're choosing. And you can take a large T limit. You know, later time limit, it's interesting. We have a linear growth. It's much like global quench. If you know quantum quench, this is much like global quench. And also, we have logarithmic term. But the interesting uh, effect is mainly first term. Second term B is because we are taking some subsystem A and just at the same location, right? And this distance between mirror and this end point, it's linearly growing. And the entanglement entropy to this CFT is log of length, right? So that, that is the reason why we have this logarithmic term. But this the first term is come from entanglement pair production. This is highly non-trivial. So to capture first term, only first term, we can also, it is in, instructive to choose uh, sh uh, choose some subsystem A to be time dependent, like just right like way, right? So I call, so mirror is almost right, right? So we, we parallel, we parallel. We assume some you know, distance between the mirror and the, the subsystem A is the same. So then, if we could distance, then we have this you know, in the point of region A, it you know, propagates in the right speed. Right? So we can choose this subsystem A, and the point is like this minus T. Then we can eliminate this log T term because of the reason I explained. So the only, only we can capture this linear growth, this linear growth term. And like Guza is just a location. If we go approach it to this boundary, Right, very close to the mirror, it's getting decreasing, of course. And if it's slightly off from the mirror, then we have this is just order one, and we have linear growth of entanglement. And actually, so we have a simple interpretation, but an interesting interpretation of this linear growth because we have lots of entanglement pair production along this purple line. So we, we, we can create this entanglement pair here and an entanglement pair. So we have some subsystem A, right? This is entanglement pair, bell pair, EPR pair is created, and one of them is here, right? Then entanglement is increasing because the, this guy and other guys are entangled, right? And this is repeated many times. This point also emits some entangled pair, so this also contributes to this guy, but not to this guy. So later time captures more entanglement, right? So that's the way we get uh, some linear growth here. And we can precisely locate this you know, entanglement pair production line, interestingly. So, but, but for this, is, let's simply think about free scalar. So then, you know, it's created pair production. This is a usual Bogolibov transformation, which happens in time-dependent background. And this is also true for moving mirror. So we can, assume, we can think about this overlap between this uh, scalar operator and this pair production operator. And this means that basically, so we can calculate this, and this is like, so like a, after Fourier transformation, so we get this, and the lovely thing we get because of integral omega, this looks a delta function, right? So delta function, so this basically estimate where this entangled pair is located, right? Created. 
So basically, this gives V plus PU equals zero, which is namely just this purple line, this purple curve along this. So entangled pair is produced along this line. So this is any explain how what happens in this background and about the entangled pair production. And now we go to a second example, which is mimics actually a black hole evaporation. Just previous example, just we have constant flux, right? It just black hole is, I mean, just uh, black hole is just uh, emitting Hawking radiation. But here, black hole emits Hawking radiation, but actually also evaporates and goes to zero size, basically. So this is a, this model is captured that. Uh, physics. And uh, this is a just choice of PU is like this. And uh, so we have like this, structure. it's like king, right? This, uh, we started static mirror and suddenly accelerated, but suddenly stopped at some point. So this case, so we can also calculate energy processor right, for this case, and it's just constant flux emits. But at middle point, it goes to negative because of some quantum effect. And at a later time, it's just again, Take a constant. This is the like same value which we saw, right? Summer flux. This is also just summer flux, but only finite time it emits. And then it, here again, this purple curve is gives us some entangled pair production. And at each point, we have we create entangled pair, right? So we create the entangled pair. So this guy, this subsystem A detected the entanglement entropy increasing. But after later time, right, this ent emitted the other pair actually reflected by this mirror and coming back. So if two guys are, so already one guy is passing through here, and if a reflected guy also coming here, then entanglement is disappear, right? Because both are in a subsystem A, right? A and B is not entangled. So in the end, entanglement disappear. Entanglement entropy is decreasing. So indeed, we can see this clearly. So in, in this plot. This is exactly so page curve, actually. So we can increasing. So this is a basic calculation of uh, evolution of this entanglement. It's the same formula which we saw before. And this is a universal formula. So we can increasing, but because of that, reflecting rate of time radiation is coming back and decreasing. And this, so this reproduces a perfect page curve. And uh, so though above results, for semi-infinite subsystem are universal, entanglement entropy for a finite interval, if we are actually interested in finite interval entanglement entropy, so we have a two twist operator, the two point function in, in the presence of boundary. This is actually equal to the four point function without the boundary. So that is a not universal. So we need the details of conformal view theory. And we will, actually this motivates us to think about the precise CFT and we let's think about holographic CFT. So that's what I will explain in the next part. And, uh, and in that context, so we are talking now entanglement that will be computed from Joseph Sequence. It's a minimal surface area. But uh, in this area three, so it's like just Joseph Sequence. Then this result, this guy come from disconnected uh, Joseph X. Disconnected Joseph X line and the rings. And they're also connected. Joseph line, but this gets a larger, always produce some larger result. So, so disconnected Joseph gives a correct answer here. And but there are early work which also com which actually computes this connected Joseph X. Okay, so now we'd like to go to this photographic approach. So for so for gravity dual, to create some gravity dual of this moving mirror, we apply ADS, ADS, what we call ADSP CFT. And so this is a, a rough sketch of ADSP CFT. So we have some conformal view theory, but lives on a manifold with boundary. This M is a manifold with boundary, a partial M. This is a boundary of M. So if this is non-compact, you know, we have some, for example, this point called ADS, but what we have some photographic dual of disk, how can we find its gravity dual. And the bottom up approach is, this is a kind of you know, hard wall approximation in ads -CMT. It's like by using that kind of approximation, it, we can have this following procedure. So we can extend this boundary of M to actually inside ADS, this sort of hard wall. This is, this is, we call this cube 
also recently, this is called end of the world brain. It's so basically, you, but you can think also this is hard work, Q. And on Q, actually, we impose particular boundary condition, namely Neumann boundary condition, given by this. I will also come up with this later. K is an extensive curvature. And uh, this region M is surrounded by Q, and this inside region N, called N, is a gravity dual of this BCFT, this BCFT. So this is a basic claim. And but, uh, before I go more detailed explanations, I also um, mentioned the crucial difference between these two subregion subregion duality. So the, this ADS BCFT is a dual of boundary conformity, gives one subregion subregion duality because this is subregion N is dual to region N, right? Bulk region N. But actually, there are other subregion subregion dualities called the entanglement duality. So this is a region A. Actually, this case is the CFT is defined on whole space, but just artificially we can think some region A and talk about reduced density matrix. And this reduced density matrix dual to region surrounded by minimal area surface, extremal surface. But the extremal surface is trace, only we require trace part of exclusive curvature is zero. Right here, but we actually impose full component of exclusive curvature. So this means over constraint. This is over constraint. So that means we back, we need a back reaction. We need to change the background because this is a brain, right? This is, if we have a brain and with some tension, then it's back reacts. And that way, so background itself in general changes. It's very complicated. But the, our case, for especially ADS3 case, we can have a simple setup without back reaction. That's mainly we are working. So, but these two guys are, are crucially different. So just I wanted to mention this difference. But actually we will see some interesting interplay between these two guys. Okay, so this here is a formulation. So we start with some gravity action, right? This is baroque action, this is a boundary action. This is a given Hawking term, this is Einstein Kilber term, and the matter and the boundary matter Lagrangian. And we so coordinate on the induced matrix on Q, we write it XA and HAB, and we define extreme curvature is like this way, and it's a normal vector, right? Derivative normal vector is basically extreme curvature. And for Gaussian normal coordinate, we have this simple formula for extreme curvature. And we take a variation anyway. So the, if we take a variation, this is a kind of text of material. So we have a delta H. H is a I mean, changing of metric at the boundary, boundary surface Q. And we have some coefficient, which is just given by extreme curvature with some uh, energy stress tensor of the boundary, because we take a variation of this. And there are two choices of boundary condition. One is this delta H is zero. This is a Dirichlet boundary condition. Normally, this is what we assume in ADS CFT as a boundary, ADS boundary. But uh, for on this new surface, new boundary Q, and of the world brain, we actually argue we should require Neumann boundary condition given by the sec this coefficient is there. This is a kind of analog of Einstein equation in the boundary, boundary Einstein equation. But why we choose Neumann boundary condition? This is actually closely related to brain world models. Indeed, we have such an interpretation, I will come back later. So we, we want to keep boundary dynamical, and the new data at surface Q should not be required. And actually, we can also realize this Neumann boundary condition in the context of string theory, especially orange fold. Orange fold or OB fold has a G2 symmetry, and G2 symmetry basically requires this KAB is just zero, and without restricting particular metric rather than Dirichlet, it's actually Neumann boundary condition. Okay, and this is a, base, and, uh, this is a basic formulation, but uh, we want to think about the basic example, which we will use for, to, create, uh, to, to create a gravity dual of this moving mirror. And this is simplest example. Anyway, we want to keep boundary conformal symmetry. Then actually we, we can find that this energy stress tensor as a boundary, Q, this new boundary surface should be proportional to induced symmetry. It's like cosmological constant, like contribution. T is a tension. Actually, we can interpret this T as just tension of this surface Q. And then this Neumann boundary condition looks like this. KAB is proportional to HAB in this way. And we can find the express formula of KAB, which is curvature, and then gravity action takes this formula, just tension. We put some tension down. And in this case, we can find a very simple solution. And if we think about just conformal fuel cell lives on the upper half plane, half plane. So this case, flat half plane, then we can easily find its gravity zero. So like this, Z is the extra dimension, 
Right, this is a Poincare radius. You can imagine this Poincare radius t plus one. And this is the x direction. And other direction I didn't write it at all. And this is a boundary, normally radius boundary is equal to zero. Radius boundary is here, but we cut this way. We just, this is a straight line. We cut this way. And here we have a half frame, right? which is dual to CFT. Right? CFT lives here. And there's an internal surface cube, right? The end of the world frame, which we introduced. And we fix some particular location of Q, rho equal rho star. Rho is this coordinate. It's like a familiar uh, hyperbolic size of ADS. Right? ADS D plus one is sliced by ADS T, dimension rho and dimension rho ADS, right? with this D rho square and cos rho square. Right? And it's totally, we can also combine to just one single one color metric. And this ADS D metric is like this. And uh, so we can have this coordinate mapping between this. And low, anyway, low is this direction. Low is minus infinity here at the boundary, and low is plus infinity is another boundary, but uh, we terminate low at some finite value low star. Right? It's like wedge. We have a wedge. And this is a gravity dual of this wedge. On this wedge is this half frame CFT, PCFT. And uh, so we can also relate this tension of this brain, T parameter, to low star, right? This is the coordinate where we have this brain. And uh, so this is a, a formulation of BCFT, but also we need uh, some formula to calculate entanglement entropy. So this is actually generalization of standard holographic entanglement entropy formula. So we can talk about this, you no, know, this wedge is exactly the same setup, the same setup here, which this is the ADS boundary, and we pick up some particular region A. Right? We, can, we want to calculate entanglement entropy for A in the presence of boundary, in the presence of boundary. This is a new ingredient. Then we have some gravity dual involves this surface cube, right? End of the world brain, surface cube. And then how we can formulate holographic entanglement entropy. So there are very important change from this usual formula. So of course we should find some minimal surface area, right, which covers the region. But it, this minimal surface can end on some space in, on surface cube. So this minimal surface can end on, terminate on surface cube. And this is the surrounded region we can call B. And this is actually the, what nowadays people call island in the previous form also appears. So this is the, anyway, this gamma A should be extreme surface and we calculate its area, right? Whole genius divided by whole. This is an entanglement, holographic entanglement entropy, but this surface can end on the surface cube. This is a new difference. But once we take into account this effect, we can properly calculate entanglement entropy in boundary conformal Q theory. So this is a, a relation. So I will come up with this later, but it's, here it's like A and B are connected. This B is iron, and uh, this, uh, this first part, brown part actually correspond to this area term, right? This is the iron contribution. And the roughly speaking, this blue part correspond to just entanglement contribution. And I, we, we will use this formula. Yeah? And so also this is related to this. So for how this is related to, you know, uh, black hole evaporation process is in this recent work, it's like this kind of holograph triality. So we have some, we are talking about the BCFT, right? It's few series lives on the manifold with boundary. And this is equivalent to by using ADS BCFT is this setup, this wedge setup, right? It's a half SQ appears. But we can also think this boundary, we have a boundary conform invariant, so we can put some, we can imagine some you know, localized degree of freedom on the boundary. So this is like also lower dimension conform invariant theory. So we have some gravity dual of this boundary, which is namely uh, the, this dual, this red boundary is dual to some gravity on anti dosh D dimensional anti dosh space. This is a total, this guy, uh, this uh, ADSB shift lives on D plus one dimension. But here we are talking about d-dimensional gravity. These two guys are dual. Also, we can apply from we can start from this setup. We can apply standard idea of brain world holography. Brain world holography tells us the surface cube with Neumann boundary So We have some gravity localized, lower dimensional gravity division. This is precisely this d-dimensional gravity on ADS2, basically. And by using that, we can connect this. You know, it is BCFT and this island formula and its relation to black hole information paradox. Okay, but uh, let me go back. But for that, we need to also explain the uh, boundary entropy. 
So boundary entropy, so this is some special quantity which only happens for, which only available for the theory with boundary. And so we are talking about the conformal theory with boundary, lives on the manifold with boundary and alpha label is called boundary conditions. And the boundary entropy, in, especially we let's focus on BCFT2, two dimensional CFT with boundary and the dual to ADS3, some part of wedge geometry of ADS3. And in that case, we can define boundary entropy which is actually a nice measure of degree freedom at the boundary. If introduced first by Freck and Rudoy, it's applied to many also condensed matter problems. And then, so this is a boundary entropy, it's this S boundary, and they exponentiate it. This is called also G, G function. This is G function, and there is famous G theorem, is proven by Freedom and Connectly, that this G actually decreases and uh, monotonically under the boundary RG flow. So we keep bulk of CFT is conformal invariant, but only boundary, we put some relevant perturbation on the boundary and we we assume some, we think some RG renormalization group flow. So then this quantity is monotonically decreasing. So that way this is kind of a, you know boundary version of C theory. So this quantity is quite useful to characterize your freedom. And we can calculate this quantity to different approaches, but uh, this amplitude, this is actually also the same as this amplitude, also some factorization, uh, factorizing uh, this amplitude from cylinder amplitude. This, uh, this two guys are equivalent. But finally, this is also the same as some constant piece of entanglement entropy in the presence of boundary. If we choose subsystem A to be intersect, to intersect with boundary, then entanglement entropy, this familiar formula, logarithmic formula plus some constant piece. This is exactly boundary contribution, boundary entropy, precisely the same as boundary entropy. And then, so we can indeed calculate this boundary entropy from this ADS species to set up. So let's remember, remember this uh, which geometry, this is ADS boundary, this is a CFT leaves, BCFT leaves on this upper half plane, a lower half plane, and this is a boundary surface Q. And then if we like this minimal surface, it, it can end on the surface Q, as I explained. So then length, we can calculate this length. It's like uh, up to this point, this 90 degree, we get the logarithmic formula. And uh, there are extra, you know, this extra part, right? This gives low star. This low star is this location, right? Q, location of Q. And the extra part is precisely boundary entropy. And we can confirm, I don't have enough time, so I will not explain, but we can confirm this quantity is also we can derive exactly the same quantity from this disk amplitude by using holographic description and the scene amplitude by using also holographic uh, passion function. So anyway, so this way we can identify this boundary entropy in this context of this BCFT. Okay, so now we go back to the our original program of moving mirror. So let's apply um, this BCFT to get a gravity dual of moving mirror. So, so far we only dis described by moving mirror by this conformal fuse language. So this is a conformal fuse with mirror, right? Deflective, deflective boundary, deflective boundary. So we can, again, we can do conformal mapping, but the nice thing in ADS3, so we know how to promote conformal map to higher dimension. ADS3 version of conformal mapping. This is exactly the answer. This is called Bernardo's map, advanced owned by Bernardo's. And uh, so we, we, we know that Z is an extra dimension, right? So we have a extension. If we, these two guys are the same as uh, original conformal mapping, as I explained. Also, extra dimension has a non-trivial factor here. So this is a, we can, using this map to, you know, just very simple to set up that straight line boundary. Then we know the, uh, how to construct ADS CFT, uh, ADS BCFT dual, because exactly this setup, this map. So this is just this, Surface is easy. Maybe you can put some angle here, right? We can, this is anyway, always straight plane. And so this is a, a horizon part. And we can also calculate entanglement entropy by region A, like just considering some uh, Joseph ranks. But the interesting thing also, if we talk about this Joseph line from here, starting from here and end on the end on this Q, surface Q. So here it's obvious, right? This from starting horror to end of here. But uh, from this original viewpoint on Poincare radius, it's like going to infinity. So it's like because it's end on this kind of horizon region. So it's like not, that's not covered in this original picture, original gravity dual. So we have to go beyond the patch. But anyway, we can calculate it. And uh, the original metric, so this moving mirror is dual to this metric. 
manifold with this area three metric given by this. It's we have kind of gravitational wave here. And uh, but uh, after coordinate mapping, we have just Poincare radius like this. This is now sta very standard BGFT setup like this, and we can calculate the entanglement to be exactly in the same way here. And so and uh, so we can, we have there are two examples. One is a constant radiation, just constant thermal radiation. This setup is same as before. And in this case, we can calculate this photographic entanglement that will be even if region A is finite width, has a finite width, just a finite interval. So there are two phases, actually. So they're connected, disconnected and connected one. Connected one is two endpoints are connected. And disconnected one is this two endpoints is connect with a uh, surface cube, end on surface cube, like this one. Right? Just some of these two guys. So more uh, analytical formula is given by this. This is, uh, this, uh, there are two contributions, first one is this, and second one is just this. This is coordinate is x0 and this is x1. Uh, x0 and x1 at time t. And the boundary entropy is contribution from there are two. And the connected case is given by this formula. And just the P prime appears conformal map. Anyway, by using that, we can calculate it and numerically, we, so we should always take a minimum between. There are two possibilities, right? disconnected and connected, we should take a minimum between them. And so here, here are a plot. This is a holographic CFT. So we have a sick line. Sick, sick line is disconnected one. And dotted line, dotted curve is connected one. So no one, initially, for a long time, disconnected one is dominate. But at this point, suddenly, connected one dominates. But anyway, in the end, we have this kind of curve. Right? This is behavior. This is very sensible. This is quite sensible behavior. So we have initial linear growth because of this you know, entangled pair production, Hawking radiation, increasing entropy, but it's end because it's finite with this, right? After that, it saturates. It's also much similar to also quantum quench, right? Entanglement entropy grows on quantum quench. And uh, so actually, so we can do the same calculation for free Dirac fermion. So this case is somehow we, we can solve everything and without using any photography, we can calculate this even finite with this case, finite subsystem side, we can calculate entanglement. It's also very similar, right? So it's like if we combine these two phases we, in this photograph case, we, we get this kink right? behavior, but in free diagram, just we have this kink. This, these two guys are very similar to each other. This is also consistent. Okay. And uh, yeah, and now we go to second model right, given by this, right? We have some entangled pair production and we already see this page curve, right? This is also true for photograph CFT because this is universal. We can also confirm this behavior in this follow-up model, but this is obvious, right? This is this page curve behavior appeared here. And also we can try also a finite interval case, right? Finite interval given by this way. So this is just, uh, this distance is 0 0.1, distance is 0 0.1, this distance is 10, right? Roughly size is 10. And the finite interval, we have a two, there are two peaks because one peak comes from one end point and the other peak comes from second end point, basically. And this line, is, and uh, always we, we find disconnected geodesic dominate. It gives a smaller result. And we can, in this case, we can just forget about connected uh, geodesic line. Okay. So these are results for a photographic result for. Uh, it's evaporating some uh, uh, model which is evaporating black holes. Okay. And uh, so now, finally, I'd like to uh, revisit these calculations from the viewpoint of global structure of space time and connection to other approach to this page curve in black hole information products. So here, uh, we talked about this model, right? So we have some boundary, we have some ADS boundary and this weight structure and this surface Q is exist. And there is a, some, we talk about region A is here, right? Subsystem A is here and then the point is X0 is here. And the minimal surface, which calculate entanglement entropy end on some point on surface Q. And this region is also, we can identify this island. And uh, interestingly here, always this island exists in this boundary CFT description, always like this. And this here is a global structure global structure, and then this left part is just flat to space, half semi-infinite line, line, semi-infinite line. 
this Penrose diagram of semi-fit line, right? But only, so this normal coordinate only covers this region, right? This region. And then this shaded region is a horizon, as we already see, right? It moving Mira has this horizon. Observer is sitting here, only here. And then actually, if we go surface Q, there is an extra dimension which is correspond to ADS2 because the surface Q is uh, surface Q is here. This is always ADS2. This is a flat space, but the surface Q is always ADS2. There are actually ADS2 black hole hidden here. This, this is actually ADS2 black hole because observer is only see this region. And this is a full, full ADS region. Is global ADS2 is here, sitting here, but we only pick up particular region. And if we talk about subsystem A, then island appears in this region. And we calculate this entropy by using this Joseph Cranks. And then, so anyway, so when A is semi-finite, an island always exists. And uh, this island is actually also outside of our normal coordinate, right? So in, also in the horizon of the surface cube. This is an interesting feature here, happening here. And we can, we can compare this uh, model with uh, a normal approach of using brain world uh, holography and ADSB CFT. So this is our model. And we nicely reproduce page curve, right? In increasing and going down. And in this picture, so we can like, roughly de decompose this uh, contribution into two parts. First part is this wedge, this 90 degree part. This gives main contribution, which shows the page curve. And the final tip, this, you know, because of Q is tilted, this, this part actually corresponds to boundary entropy. Boundary entropy depends on you know, how the surface Q is tilted. And uh, it's proportional to this angle, basically. And this gives actually, we can regard this part as ADS2 entropy. So ADS2 black hole is appeared here. Right? This entropy is this boundary entropy contribution. But the non trivial time dependence come from this entanglement entropy part, quantum fusory entanglement. Entropy. But on the other hand, if we look into this brain world derivation of page curve, this is one summary from my viewpoint. There are many works, but one, one summary of this. And uh, so this case is actually this not this uh, surface Q exists, but it's more kind of non-trivially um, curved, non-trivially curved, so that it includes black hole horizon. This is just a sharp plane and just ADS2, but it's more complicated metric like this. But anyway, we have some, always we have a, the Q plays a role of end of the world brain. So this minimal surface end on some point of Q. And initially it's really going to tip of the brain Q. And it doesn't touch, attach black hole. For example, entanglement weight of A is covers everything, right? Outside of black hole. Covers everything here, but it's not, does not enter into black hole region. But after time evolution, because this black hole shrinks zero size and somehow this surface Q is going inside bulk, right? And shrinks. And then, so this point, if we want to, if we connect, if we want to connect this point to the end point, tip of Q, it's cost quite a lot. This length gets larger. So it's really, it is better to terminate at some middle point. So then because of that, we encounter iron. There is a transition before, uh, without island and island. So this is a difference from this model. This, our model is always island exists. And uh, but anyway, so this kind of non-trivial time dependence appears because this boundary energy stress tensor is actually non-trivially time dependent. Our case, this guy is a very trivial time dependence. It's just constant. And that way, we end up with some non-trivial radiation from the surface Q, which where we have some gravity, right? So mm -hmm. this gives some coking radiation. And then this, like page curve, it goes to zero. Entanglement entropy just goes to shrink to zero size. So this, uh, it, so in this way, this two guys are uh, construction and it's a, the contribution looks different, but actually the difference is this precise shape of surface Q. So if we slightly modify, and gradually modifying surface Q, these two different models seem to be connected. Okay, so this basically these are, uh, so now it's a good time to uh, end on my talk. So basically, I let me summarize my conclusion. So moving mirror provides a um, class of non-equilibrium setups, 
analogous to Hawking radiation of black hole evaporation. And we can also use a kind of model of knowing through physics like quantum quenches. And we computed the time evolution of entanglement entropy and gave its clear explanation in terms of entangled pair productions. And in a moving mirror model, which mimics black hole evaporation, we showed that entanglement entropy follows an ideal page curve. We presented a gravity dual of moving mirror via ADS BGFT, and our moving mirror setup may be interpreted as a deformation of brain world derivation of page curve. So originally, of course, moving mirror itself is just defining conformal field theory. So nothing, originally nothing related to precise, I mean, nothing related to gravitational physics of black hole, it's just model. But after we take into account of holography, we can add extra gravitational dynamics to moving mirror because the holography changes CFT into gravity. And after that, it looks somehow very similar to, but it's different, but I, I mean, somehow connected to um uh, world setup of page curve derivation. Then anyway, this is a, a final observation. And uh, so there are future, a bunch of future directions. So we can also generalize our model to the setup with double mirrors because uh, one mirror reflect and this reflected, you know, degree of freedom also reflected back uh, with another mirror. And this is, uh, we are going to discuss this in our forthcoming longer paper. And also, in principle, we can generalize ADS BCFT decryption in higher dimensions. So we can, in principle, able to describe moving mirror in higher dimension. And uh, so it's quite interesting to think about precise connection, even though we discuss a little bit, but uh, it's good to understand better the precise connection between evaporating black hole and gravity dual or moving mirror setup. And uh, also, another exciting aspect of black hole information is black hole singularities, how we can apply, approach this problem in using moving mirror. So uh, my one idea is to use space-like boundary instead of time-like boundary in BCFT to understand the physics of black hole singularities. It's an interesting future problem. And also from different viewpoints, anyway, this gives a non-equivalent, non-trivial setup. So we, we may have some interesting phone this matter applications and also it's quite interesting to think about tensor network interpretation because tensor network gives a space and non-trivial time dependence of bulk geometry, its connection to in the light of quantum entanglement. Thank you very much. I think I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Let's, let's have questions from the audience, please. Don't be shy. Whomever wants to ask, just go ahead. Hi, Tadashi. Ah, hi. Hi, Jose. So I have a question. I was a little confused at the end uh, when you said that you need to introduce more dynamics into the uh, into the surface queue. Can you achieve that by complicating the world volume action of the surface queue instead of just uh -huh. doing vacuum energy on the surface queue? You mean this one, right? So how I mean the one the one upstairs. Hmm? Sorry? I mean the one upstairs in the upper part of the of the slide. That was the that was derived under the assumption that the you only have a cosmological constant on Q, you no? Know, as world volume. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. So so our model originally only assuming cosmological constant on Q. That's right. So but this to, to describe this kind of model and really gravitational time dependence, we should think about adding extra matter, and which is gives a non-trivial time dependence of energy, boundary energy stresses on Q. So you want some non-trivial equation? Yes, yes, state yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, we can estimate this by assuming some particular shape of Q. So if we model it, then if you have some you know, original goal, then we can inversely compute this T TABQ. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can talk about some, we can think of some time dependence of the surface Q and if their own metric, then we can basically read off this TABQ. Mm -hmm. And another question, uh, when you have the model in which you have, you model evaporation by just stopping the mirror, uh, after the conformal transformation, do you see some type of apparent horizon that is uh, shrinking or something? 
Uh, good question. That is a good question. Actually, oh, that's a good question. So you're talking about this model, right? This model. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this model case actually global structure is looks apparently trivial because we have this. So here, if we have just single a kink or example one, this one, if we think this one, then we have a non-trivial horizon here. And it the space time looks like this region. But if we again do another this stopping uh, another kink here, mm -hmm. this kind of behavior, then we add extra space here. So it's like just go to normal Minkowski space. Mm -hmm. So uh, as long as we see this causal structure, we cannot see some black hole uh, appearance of black hole and uh, disappearing. That, that's actually, but, but this is because, because our model somehow treat this part is kind of very simplified. Mm -hmm. And our model actually, the reason, yeah, so our model actually, main part, main contribution of page curve actually come from this quantum field theory entanglement, like this, especially this. It's not, does not come from this black hole entropy here, hidden here, mm -hmm. hidden here, as long as we see. Okay. Yeah, but uh, yeah, anyway, answer is uh, it's not uh, as long uh, at, uh, at least at present, we don't see any such apparent horizon creation. Yeah, mm -hmm. hmm. yeah that, that's a very yeah. interesting question. And uh, maybe we can, you know, maybe we, if we reinterpret this formula, maybe we can, for example, we can send some, you know, we can, this summation is always important, but uh, we can maybe bring some contribution here to black hole entropy, then maybe we can see some time dependent black hole entropy. And then that might be related to some effective apparent horizon, but it's kind of, I mean, still not clear. I mean, it's kind of interesting question. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you. More questions? Uh, Daniel, yes, yes. Hello, Tadashi. Hello. Thanks for the talk. Uh, my question is about the black hole evaporation model that you construct. Uh, it, it, in the PU function, the conformal fa map function, it seems that once you uh, consider two terms that can come with each other, then uh, the page curve uh, will be obtained. It, to me, it's in some sense, this PU function is uh, playing the role of entropy. Is it true? And if yes, uh, uh, is there any physical motivation behind that? Uh, so so you, you mean this example too? Uh, I mean, yes, in the, hmm. in your black, um, Maybe in example two, yes, yes. The PU function uh, at the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the how we, uh, but, but the, the PU function is basically chosen so that we reproduce this kind of double king like profile. Uh, I see, I see. And uh, we know, I, I mean, if this if accelerating like this way, this emits Hawking radiation. And uh, if we always, if we evolve this way, it's uh, always constantly uh, uh, emits Hawking radiation, but we want to terminate at some point because we want to describe some evaporating rock, so we suddenly stopped. Yeah. Mm, this is a motivation that, uh, why we uh, consider uh, this okay. profile. Okay, thanks. And uh, maybe you also talk about some connection between entropy and P function P, right? I can give some yes. yeah, quick comment for that. Actually, so this formula basically, entropy formula looks like this. Or maybe much simpler one is better, I think. Sorry, this one, yeah. So this first term, so of course, boundary entropy part is constant. That doesn't give any time dependence. So this first term is important, but especially square root P prime factor. This comes from wild rescaling because we have a, a conformal mapping and the cutoff scale, we set cutoff scale epsilon in the first coordinate, sorry, uh, first coordinate. In this setup, we put some normal call, normal cutoff that Z equal epsilon. But uh, eta, now it's changed to eta. And eta 
cutoff in eta is non trivially related to epsilon, epsilon times square root of p prime. And this p prime is basically gives phase curve in this calculation. This, uh, there are other factors, but that, that doesn't contribute so much. Okay. Basically, so this viral scaling gives phase curve in this calculation. Thank you. More questions? The remaining? Yes, uh, can I have another one? Yeah, of course, go ahead. Uh, can, can, you, can you do some Euclidean version of this to get uh, replica wormholes somewhere? Uh huh. Ah, uh, a replica wormhole. Hmm. I think, the, but the, anyway, this calculation basically, I, I think the your question is equivalent to derive, uh, to derive this formula. This formula, basically. So, in principle, I think, yeah, basically, it's very similar. I think very similar to replica wormhole because uh, we have some this kind of island. And we calculate the entanglement entropy. We can think about some holographic entanglement entropy. I mean, uh, deriving holographic entanglement entropy formula from ADS, ADS CFT or ADS gravity, but with end of the world of red. And then we basically use, apply some rep, uh, normal replicatory here. And so the, there are deficit angle and which penetrate in the bulk, but it's end on surface Q. And this surface Q, the, there are new boundary appears. And basically this is same as replica one hole. Mm -hmm. mm, replica one hole type solution, you, you know there is argument of Ruko Itza and Murata Sena to de derive this holographic entanglement entropy. And plus replica one hole right contribution gives it, um, this formula basically. I, I think that, that that's it. So I think, we, I think you are right in that sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somehow <laughs> so far we didn't derive this formula. <laughs> Somehow, mm, but I think we need such a technique to find. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Tadash. Thank you very much. Any more questions? So just in case somebody wants to ask informal questions, I will stop recording and then you'll have the last time to ask uh, or discuss with Tadashi. So before ending, let me thank you very much again for your talk. And let me stop the recording. Find, find, where is, ah, okay.